Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at day seven of the feature film. This is our big day, multiple sets on a soundstage. Let's look at it. So today we had three different scenes that take place at three different types of the uh, times of the movie to shoot. One that takes place right in the beginning, so sort of like the intro of the main character before he has um, discovered the body. The second one towards the end where he uh, meets a pivotal character. And the final one, it's the very end of the film. So I'm not going to talk too much about that to give away spoilers, but it happens in hospital. So this was our highest page count day. It was our most scenes. And the reason that we chose to do it on a soundstage and pay for the location was that it saved us so much time to shoot three different locations in one day and literally have them 10 feet from one another. It means we didn't have to get all the lights and the crew and the cast into cars, drive across, park, get out, work stuff out. We had everything in the one place. We were able to walk from the hospital uh, to the business room, um, to another office, to somewhere else, all in the one place. We had parking for 15 cars. Uh, we were able to have the food delivered and so we had somewhere to eat it. It was quiet, which was really critical. We could control the light. We didn't have to mess with um, stuff coming in the windows. Generally, it was all the good things about shooting on a soundstage. So we started with Trigg's introduction, which is where he walks into work and and almost falls into an empty elevator shaft. He gets saved by the um, doorman. We dressed what actually is a part of the hospital set to look like the lobby of a fancy skyscraper. And we used a green screen, uh, pop out green screen um, pinned to the ceiling because this is a soundstage that actually doesn't have a ceiling. So for the shot where we look up at the ceiling and for this, we actually used a mirror to be inside the fake elevator, pointing down into a mirror and then looking up at our actor, which is kind of complicated. Um, and it's something that I came up with in pre and hoped would work and actually worked really well. I had shot at this location before. In fact, it's the only working door elevator set that I know of. Um, and because this takes place within an elevator, this was something that was great to use. It's also one of the best hospital sets that I've used. Um, and the fact that it was right next to the elevator meant that we could do both in one place. So we shot the elevator scene first, then we dressed the upstairs, which is the jewelry dealer's office. Then we shot the hospital scene, um, the hallway, which is part one. Uh, we shot this in slow motion. Um, we got some, some of our crew were able to stand in as background. I'm really struggling to describe this uh, scene without giving away the entire plot of the film. Um, but suffice to say, it's a, it's a resolution of the entire film. It happens in a hospital. It's a really powerful moment. We lit this with, again, uh, the Hudson Spider um, into an umbrella through the window, as well as quasar tubes in the rafters to give backlight, and also the SpaceX into a seven foot white umbrella to give punch and give nice outdoor light. I wasn't a huge fan of these peach colored walls. Uh, they're sort of too close to skin tone. You, the actors tend to blend into them. So we were doing some masking and in, uh, in the grade and also cutting the light to try and get the walls a stop or half a stop darker than the actor's face. Again, we used the Proine slider um, to be able to push in our actors and our very diligent focus puller did a great job of slowly pulling focus with the slow movement of the slider, which is not easy. So that was the morning. Afterwards, we moved upstairs and were able to shoot the uh, dealer's office from multiple different angles. We used a hazer in here. Big challenge we had here was this is not part of the soundstage. It's actually a part of the previous factory that they built the soundstage within. So it has a tin roof. And of course, it started raining again. It was totally deafening to us, but you actually don't hear it that much. Um, in the soundtrack. And what you do here is sort of a blanket background sound. So it actually adds to the atmospherics. We're working with this amazing veteran actor, CJ Baker. Because of the COVID hazard, we kind of kept away from him all day. But he came in, gave an amazing performance, um, really added a lot, brought a lot to the character, added a lot to the script. Um, and then he was gone. 
So it's sort of those type of performances that really raise the level of a whole movie and raise the level of the actors working with them. We had a lot of fun dressing these little um, cubes in the background. You can see a Mesix box from Rick and Morty. You see the sword from Highlander. Um, anything that was kind of shiny we put in there. My inspiration for this scene is actually from a Ridley Scott movie called The Counselor that I love the cinematography of where they keep one side very bright and the other side very, very dark. So you actually need to light the background so that they don't fall off into total darkness to create that silhouette. This was the last day before we were wrapping or going on hiatus um, because of COVID-19. Everyone left, I was alone in this studio for about an hour packing up by myself. Uh, I really felt after working for seven days straight and absolutely killing myself getting this film made, I felt like the whole thing was sort of slipping away from me. Um, and I really could only make this video now that we have dates again to start filming. Um, and I feel as though that this all wasn't for naught and that the film is gonna get finished and it's gonna be a better film because of it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.